afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yanni, I got to make sure that the volume is turned up. <laughs> anyway, welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Okay, I'm going to see if I can um get a couple of... Uh, of videos out today, but what I really, really wanted to address first, because I think this is so important, I saw a video with a young lady um, on yesterday, well, yeah, I think it was yesterday or last night, and she was talking about her post-traumatic stress, um, I think her name was B, B. Smith, um, but not only was it uh, you know, just gut-wrenching, you know, and at first I applaud her courage um, to talk openly and honestly about post-traumatic stress because a lot of us don't like to talk about those type of things. You know, we like to uh, talk about things that hmm, don't hurt so bad or project um, our pain onto somebody else or talk about other things that distract us. I'm talking about how we feel on an individual level. So hopefully, um, this is what this channel um, will produce, because this is really the, the goal of it, for us to talk, start talking about what goes on around our mental health and removing the stigma around it, because all y'all some crazy fuck. I mean, excuse my language. Oops. Excuse me. I didn't mean to say that. I meant to say, all y'all crazy, we're all nuts. Okay, it's like that Barbara Streisand movie, Nuts. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> I don't know if y'all ever seen that movie, but it was it was one scene in that movie that I take with me forever and ever. Richard Dreyfus, who I, I really love, um, he was talking, he went to the insane asylum, to go and talk with his patient, who was Barbara Streisand, okay? And while he was waiting, there was uh, a guy who was uh, just uh, extremely mentally ill. He was actually a patient. And um, the reason why Robert, I mean, Richard Dreyfus didn't know is because this particular patient, uh, let me get it right, not only, yeah, he was mentally ill, but he would always wear a suit coat. So obviously, you know, he was um, a doctor or something um, before he ended up there, and he was extremely brilliant. So I can't exactly remember his attire, but he was talking to Richard Dreyfus, and Dreyfus was very interesting because he was a psychiatrist as well. He had no idea that this guy was a patient, and they were... Uh, going back and forth, you know, with academia talk, and it was impressive. But not only was it impressive, the part that was crazy is when the guy got up and walked away, one of the nurses said, okay, so-and-so, so-and-so, come with me now, come. And Richard Dreyfus was like, what the hell? I was talking to a patient. <laughs> and that's exactly what I feel about us. You cannot have gone through all of us, what we have gone through, not only as a group of people um, who not only were victimized by trauma, but even the people who perpetuated some of this trauma on us. Um, I always say that, you know, you can never say all because it just like it was it would be imprudent to say that only um I mean that that we we're the only people that have suffered from the trauma. Yes, we have suffered probably in a greater scale and in more areas, absolutely, no doubt, hands down. But other people were affected mentally, emotionally, psychologically by the trauma as well. And that's why they're crazy. Because really, it is not, you know, for some people that got more human in them, more empathy in them, 
it's not conducive for them to watch somebody take a knife and slit a pregnant woman's stomach out and jank the baby out the womb and push everything back and take the baby's head and bust it on the concrete uh, or bust it on the ground. You know, not every uh, white person, make myself clear, was, um, <laughs> you know, was watching those type of acts and going, yeah, and their thirst for blood was like, ooh, I can't, I can't believe that. Because you could never, we could never produce the John Browns or the Viola Russo's. And so, could, so that's just my thinking. So post-traumatic stress is something that we're all uh, experiencing. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to grab this because, like I said, I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm in hell just like y'all. I ain't fall from heaven. I have all these flaws. I um, am real about them. I will cuss a person out if they come at me the wrong way. I've learned, I've temper, um, tem I've, I've calmed myself down a lot because, of course, age does it. Uh huh. But being in show business and being around people and being in a situation where I'm commanding and I'm, uh, I'm doing, I've, I've, I've had a lot of uh, tendencies and behaviors that I had to really look at, at, and then that's why I began to look at all the people around me, the ministers, the singers. So I be, um, so it's not just um, uh, uh, um, people that I think these people are more susceptible, but I'm saying as a society as a whole, and especially as uh, uh, black people, we suffer from a cultural post-traumatic stress. We have cell memory, and in our cell memory, our DNA carries the trauma. Uh, of all of the things that were done to us in these Americas. So, or, you know, that is very important that we understand that because if we start talking about DNA and cell, and then you do have a cell memory. And that can um, play a part in what the post-traumatic stress is. So, listen, I'm not a psychiatrist. I just pulled out their book. This is the this is the the the, the DSM of the five manual, and if I pull out the four, it's gonna have this pretty much the same information. So this is the latest um, model, the latest um, edition. So let me just start this, and I want to do this real quickly. And this is their definition of post traumatic stress. It said the following criteria applies to adults, adolescents, and children older than six years. For children six years or younger, see, see corresponding criteria. Okay. Now, these are the criteria. Okay. A, exposure to actual or threatened death, serious injury, or sexual violence in one or more of the following ways. Okay. Directly experiencing the trauma or the traumatic event. By witnessing in person the events as it occurred to others, learning that the traumatic event occurred to a close family member or close friend. So just learning of it can send you to post-traumatic. You can have stress. So listen to this. And if you can't see how as a people we fit into this, I don't understand what climate you're on, but this is how I see us. I see us as damaged people. And unless we get to to thinking about what our mental health looks like, we can't do nothing else. We can't even move forward with a correct strategy because we're too scattered in other places. But let me just continue because, you know, I'll get off. I'll start going off. In cases of actual or threatened death of a family member or a friend, the event must have been violent or accidental. Experiencing repeated or extreme exposure to adverse details of a traumatic event. Um, that's like, like I eat people like first responders, collecting human remains, police officers, re repeatedly being exposed to details and murder and you know child abuse. That's why they're jaded. That's why it's important that the police and people that are first responders, that is a perfect reason. For all you people that can't even think straight, is that these people that we are in, th in thrusting into, if 
unless they have the job of killing them for uh, population control and nobody's telling anybody that, then these civil servants should be the main people that should have their psyche evaluated, evaluated on a continuous basis because out on the streets, they have a license to kill with impunity and nobody can stop them. Nobody can question them. They ain't going to get away with it. So unless it's a mandate for them to do this, and this is part of what we don't see, the hidden hand, the puppet master, unless that is the job, just like I believe, in my opinion, the, the, the uh, police departments evolve from slave catchers. That's what they do, right? Um, it's just that now they police more things and they've made it look more normal. But this is what it derived from. But unless their job is to, to um, you know, just basically kill us and have us paying for our own demise, then why wouldn't we want these people evaluated? I told you before, I saw police snorting cocaine out the um, uh, uh, back of a car. And I hate to this day, because I was filled with fear. I was, I couldn't believe it. So just like I saw them using them drugs on the streets, don't you know that they have like the highest rate of domestic violence with their women? I mean, they're the highest. The people, you you have a fight with your husband, you call the police, and you just don't know. He might have had more than likely 60%. He probably had a fight with his before he came here. Or he, she's divorcing him, and he's crazy, and he's on pills. So we're not drug testing these people. Okay? This um, post-traumatic stress and what we're dealing with is real. The residue of dealing with people that are sick and the sick people are policing you or setting mandates and standards for you to follow and you know they're mentally ill. That's a problem. That's stressful. Okay? That's why a lot of people are not uncomfortable with, uh, you know, what the, what the crown is doing right now. But they got the right man up front to do it who's mentally ill, Donald Trump. But these ideas aren't just his. You know, these are the Koch brothers in, in, in living color. Anyway, let me, y'all, y'all, let me go on. Presence of one or more of the following intrusion symptoms associated with a traumatic, traumatic event beginning after the traumatic event has occurred. Right. Recurrent, involuntary, and intrusive distress in memories of the traumatic event. Reoccurring, distressing dreams in which the content, content and or effect of the dream are related to the traumatic event. Children uh, may have frightening dreams. Let me put that in there. Without recognizable content. But disassociative reaction. Okay, flashbacks um, uh, in which the individual feels or acts as if a traumatic, traumatic events were reoccurring. Such reactions may occur on a continuum, with the most extreme expression being a complete loss of awareness of present surroundings. Intense or prolonged psychological distress at the exposure to internal or external clues that symbolize or resemble an aspect of the traumatic event. Mark psychological reactions to internal or external cues that symbolize or resemble an aspect of the trauma event. Like every time I see a whip or every time most black people see a chain, it just does something to them. It doesn't make them feel empowered. It makes them feel angry. It makes them feel fearful. It makes, it, you know, I don't know what it does. It just doesn't. A lot of stuff to the nervous system. Probably sends cortisol every damn day. You know, these type of things. Okay? So, avoidance of or efforts to avoid distressing memories, thoughts, or feelings about um, the event. A avoidance of or efforts to avoid external reminders. People, places, conversations, activity, objects, or situations. They don't even want to talk about it. That arouse distressing memories, thoughts, or feelings about the closely associated with the event. Negative alterations in cognitions, 
and mood associated with the traumatic event. Beginning or worsening at the traumatic event has occurred as evidenced by two or more of the following. The inability to remember an important aspect of the traumatic event, typically due to disassociative amnesia and not other factors such as head injury or alcohol or anything like that. They've just shut down. They don't even want to remember it. Uh, persistent and exaggerated negative beliefs or expectations about oneself, others, and the world. I am bad. No one can be trusted. The world is completely blah, 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 dangerous. My my whole nervous system is per permanently ruined. Um, th these are, are internal. Internal. Stress factors. Let me go on. Um, persistent distorted cognitions about the cause or consequences of the traumatic event. Persistent negative emotional state ranging from fear, horror, anger, guilt, or shame. Markedly di diminished interest or participation in significant activities. Feelings of detachment or estrangement. From others, persistent inability to experience positive emotions, inability to experience happiness, satisfaction, or even loving feelings. I'm not talking about going through the motions. I'm talking about really, really feeling authentic love. Okay. And what if you don't know these things? And you go through your life and not even knowing that um, post-traumatic stress is what it is. So, you know, I'm going to stop right here because, you know, it's not my intention to read um, all this about trauma. Because there, it, it goes on more and more and more. But I, I, I would recommend everybody, again, to have a... You know, just this book in your house, just like I, you know, some people have medical books. I got medical books. But just like you might have some the books that might tell you, you know, other things along your journey. It's okay to have a book in the house uh, to um, maybe define or give you an idea of what you're feeling mentally. It's okay. You know, sometimes we might have an ache or pain in the back of our necks or our backs or our legs. And we might get one of those medical books and try to see if we can describe it or figure out what it is. And I'm just saying that it's okay to do that for your mental health. In fact, I think it's imperative. It's imperative. Okay. I want to say, um, anybody out there that's suffering from post-traumatic stress or feel that they're having uh, any kind of mental disorders and maybe their family is not very open or very, um, you know, positive about, because you know how a lot of black folks is about to talk about their mental health, um, then I suggest that you get in touch with the National Alliance of the Mentally Ill. I think it's a very important place to start. And um, from there... You can be provided with a lot of resources, and you can remain anonymous, and you can begin to deal with some of the things that are bothering you, at least be led into a direction um, where you can get some help, okay? All right. If you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, share, and I will see you guys next time right here, right about now in the mental health. All right, have a great day. Bye-bye, y'all.